Hello and welcome to the Origin MD channel. Elves have been a staple in magic for decades. This deck's main plan is pretty straightforward. We want to start with lots of cheap elves and flood the board extremely fast. We want to take advantage of a possible ramp with Druid of the Cowl for mana and win in the lead for generating more elves and power on the board. With the Druid, you can play out Lissalana Huntmaster on turn 3 if you've got a good draw and continue generating advantage. Shaman of the Pack is a card that can make a huge dent on your opponent's life total, or even finish the game outright, if the opponent hasn't cleared out your creatures. Once you've generated the elves, it's time to attack, and use those creatures to deal massive damage with Might of the Masses, Decimator of the Provinces can be emerged from one of your expendable elves, which is any one of them really. This makes all our small elves go into frenzy with plus 2 plus 2 and trample, and it's more likely than not finishes the game outright. Plan B is to corrupt elves into worshipping Omendal and flipping it, although in the current meta with the abundance of exile effects, it's not ideal. The deck is vulnerable to board wipes and burn decks, but with a good hand, there are few decks that are able to stand up to this one, as long as you stick to the plan and Reclamation Sages can also wreck all kind of vehicle and mill varieties. The budget version of this deck uses Origin set only, and it can be found in level 3 of the video FAQ. Now, let's discuss each card in more detail. Alham Renegade is an elf with death touch. It's a nice aggressive creature that can double as an attack preventer and make the opponent think twice before attacking into it with a valuable one. Feral Push is one of the best efficient removal spells we have in Magic Tools. Takes out a copter and most aggressive creatures. Late game it can take out man lands. Can never go wrong with it, but it hadn't had as big of an impact as I thought it would. Blossoming Defense can make a tempo swing by countering the opponent's removal, or by pumping our creatures to take out his. Since it doesn't provide a huge upside for us, we only want to run one copy. Might of the Masses shines in this deck, since we want to spam the creatures each turn and we have 27 creatures, not counting the Copter. This can result in a one turn kill if the opponent doesn't have removal. Sylvan Advocate is one of the most efficient elves for its mana cost in Vacuum, with 2-3 Vigilance body and an upside of becoming 4 fight when you get 6 lands. Dwin in the lead provides us with 2 elves for a total of 3 power. Definitely want to play as many of those as we can. Elvish Visionary provides an additional card draw, making it a good play no matter what the turn it is. Druid of the Cowl is a mana elf, allowing us to play more elves faster, as well as accelerating towards our ultimate elf buffer. Most aggro mid-range decks get better with the Copter inclusion. Apart from being immune to most sorcery speed removal, and given an evasive semi-haste boost to elves, it provides us with card filtering, allowing us to mitigate mana floods and mana screws. Nissa allows us to ramp for an additional forest, thinning out our deck a little in the process, making her decent, in case you get stuck with 3 mana and want to guarantee that you'll have enough mana to deploy the elf border patrols next turn. Reclamation Sage might not be as big of a necessity as it was in Kaladesh and Ether Revolt, but in this deck he still gets a chance to contribute towards victory, even if he doesn't destroy an artifact and enchantment. When he does get value, however, the Tempo Swing may win you the game. Shaman of the Pack makes the opponent lose life equal to the number of elves you have. Considering the number of elves in the deck, it can result in massive damage. Lissalana Huntmaster is pretty expensive, but if left unchecked, it may generate legions of elves. The key card is perhaps Druid of the Cow, as it can accelerate the Huntmaster to turn 3 instead of 4, making the potential upside fantastic. Dwinin is the patrol chief, and in her presence the rest of the elves feel more motivated, getting plus 1 plus 1. A prime target for removal, she rarely gets to survive for long enough on the front line, but getting that swing with buffed up elves on turn 4 or 5 can be a game winner in any case. She does have reach and can block some flyers, and you could potentially gain some life from attacking elves, but in practice it happens quite rarely. 
This is also one of the reasons why I don't include the Cultivator of Blades in the deck. They eat too much removal to have much impact on the game. But the Border Patrol is not complete. Without the Boar, who makes the elves go crazy for a turn, he may not have documents to roam around Lowen, but doesn't seem to care at all. All our small creatures suddenly get plus 2 plus 2 and trample, and it's unlikely there will be survivors left once he hits the board. Furthermore, even if it is countered or removed, the trigger will still resolve, making it even more consistent than I've imagined. 10 out of 10 must play it for the fun value. On another note, we have 22 potential green mana sources including the mana elves, so it's quite consistent to be able to play it out. As for the mana base, we have 23 lands, including 2 swamps, 13 forests, 2 wardman cemeteries, 1 rogue's passage for our creature in case of a board stall, and 3 other hubs for the emergency black spell we may need. I have to mention that the Westfell Abbey is an alternative win condition for us, since we do generate a huge amount of creatures by turn 6 that will enable the sacrifice. Now that we have finally finished discussing the deck, let's play. Okay, it's going to be our turn. Mm, let's keep this hand. Start off with the forest. Fortunately, we don't have anything for the for another elf for the Dominion's Elite. Let's see if we're going to top deck something. Then we can perhaps wait. Alright, we got ourselves a Druid of the Cowl, which is quite nice since this means that we can go for turn 3 Lissalana Huntmaster and then we can go for Dwinis Elite so white, blue and green okay let's go for the Huntmaster Right, has black as well, it's going to be an Oath of Gideon, which sort of implies a Super Friends deck. Let's see how well this will work out for our opponent. Two Mites of the Masses, let's see, we have access to five mana, so we can go for a Dwinnie's Elite. And we can go for a Shaman of the Pack as well. We can hit him for 6 this way. Or we can wait. But honestly speaking, I don't really want to wait. Although we could. He is one turn away from the ultimate. I think we can still just go ahead and attack. If he doesn't block this is for damage, but he chumps, which is fine as well. And we're just going to say go. Just not a language or Yohinis. Okay, he does have black. Removal? No. Nope. No mass removal. Well, I'm afraid this just might seal the deal. This is six. 6 damage here, and we can go for 2 Might of the Masses, which is going to be 12. We just have to attack with everyone but the Druid of the Cowl. Yep, this... I mis miscounted a bit. Let's go ahead and attack with everyone but the Druid of the Cowl. Let's see if he's going to use any removal here. Alright. Might of the Masses 1. Might of the Masses 2. And it's... is it game or not? Yep, it's game. Okay, this doesn't look too bad. We are on the play. So we get to play out the Narham Renegade. Next the Elvish Visionary. So hopefully we will get our third mana for Nyssa. And potentially a Shaman of the Pack somewhere along the way. A red from the opponent. 
So, Reclamation Sage is probably not going to be of too much help. Let's go ahead and draw a card. It is going to be a land. This is quite nice. Alright, red and white. And we're going to see Veteran Motorist. Which sort of implies that this is going to be a Boros or Mother Vehicles. So yeah, might as well just ramp ourselves with Nissan. Alright, we've also got a Dwin in the lead, but I still think that I want a surefire a surefire land next turn so that I can potentially play out the Dwin in the lead and something else too. I don't know why our opponent is not declaring the damage to go through. Okay, so actually he's going to go for it like that. We could even save our Renegade. But I don't think I want to do this. If he's ready to trade like this, then it's fine. Since he's still going to need some sort of creatures to crew the vehicles. And I'm really at a loss why he did this. But we'll see soon enough. Alright, has a top the engineer. This is fine. He's going to aggressively attack for one. This is fine. Seems like he probably has some ground-based transport that he wants to have haste with the top the engineer. Alright. We've got two forests, so we can play out the Dwinus Elite. Then I think we can attack with our creatures, and if he blocks with any of them, then we can get rid of the top the engineer since it's a very problematic creature for us and if he doesn't block then we have another dwindling elite so in any case it's all good for us we are currently in a pretty decent position all right doesn't do anything else Takes the damage and we populate the board with lots of our elves. Now all we need is one more black mana and then we can hit for a very decent amount. Okay, here comes the Heart of Kirin. Does he have anything else because it requires crew 3? He does have a veteran motorist. Okay. So that means that it can become a 5-5. But our Might of the Masses is already quite good, and we have a Reclamation Sage to take it out. Oh, he's even going to crew it. I have to say that's quite bold. If he's going to crew it, then he won't be able to crew it back in response. And 5 damage is... Or even 6 damage is not... It's not something we <laughs> cannot deal with. Our opponent also leaves himself open for a very serious blowout. Alright, we've got 5 mana now, so we can go for Reclamation Sage. Just get rid of the Heart of Kirin. So, we've got 7. One, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 and 7 is 16 exactly. I think he will be hard pressed to take us out next turn. So we're just going to attack with everything. Let's see. We can probably leave behind just one of our creatures. But if he doesn't block... Yeah, I want to take out his top the engineer as well. So we're going to leave him 
at 8 and he does need some sort of sweeper in order to win this but with the current situation all right he has another veteran motorist this is fine all we need is another black mana source at the moment we do have at least five in our deck after this game maybe i would want to add some more has SRAM as well, this is fine. I am more than willing to trade. Okay, we got Might of the Masses, which means we are going to win anyway. Any creature that he doesn't block, we're just going to use the Might. And it's going to be a game. Alright, good game. Oh. Okay, let's see, this looks decent, our opponent is going to play first, we've got a potential black source when we need it, we've got a smuggler sculpted to shuffle through our hand, and we've got some good spells here, no one drops but that's fine, our opponent seems to have more cards than usual in his deck, alright, shaman of the pack. Let's wait and see what our opponent is going to have. Black and white. Okay. Anything else? Not that I can see. Alright, we got uh, another air hub. Also not too bad. Let's go for the smuggler scopter. See if our opponent is going to play a creature. If he is, it can be a mid-range deck, but otherwise it's probably a white and black control. Okay, he does have a Fragment Eyes, but that is fine since we're not overly reliant on the Copter. And it does seem to be something along the lines of a black and white control. So, three Ether Hubs. Let's go for a Sylvan Advocate. Black and white usually have unconditional removal spells, so it doesn't really matter at which stage we're going to do it. Okay, none of the white orchard is going to allow him to ramp for white mana. Can now play one more. Alright. Okay. Let's see, we can play out an elvish visionary here, draw another card. Perhaps it's going to be an instant that can potentially save our Silver Advocate if he has a combo trick. No such thing. However, we're still going to attack. If he has a trick, then we can play out the Narham Renegade. And make it into a um, 2-3. But to be honest, I think we can just play it out. And if our opponent has a sweeper, then we wouldn't be able to win anyway. Okay. It does look like this is something like a black-white control deck. He has missed his land drop, though. No attacks. Alright. Don't think he will have too many enchantments. We can play out the Reclamation Sage, so that we will have more else for the Shaman. Um, probably want to wait a bit more before attacking, since next turn our Selenarchon is going to be a 4-5. Since right now he can just straight up block with Eileen. Let's play out the Reclamation Sage. No attacks. We're getting a little bit mono flooded here. Okay, Oath of Liliana is fine. We'll just sack the Elvish Visionary. Question is, what other Planeswalkers does he have? Alright. So now we can trade. Doesn't want to. This is fine as well. Leaves him at 14. Collective effort. Alright. Takes out the Sylvan Advocate. 
we are getting really flooded here in terms of mana. All right. Chelly <laughs> Destiny. Well, well, well. He can hit for seven. So this is going to be a black-white mid-range of sorts. Okay, nothing much we can do about it. Our opponent is at 14. We've got an Elvish Visionary that we can cast. Let's see what we're going to draw into. Alright, Lissalana Huntmaster. We are going to get hit for 7 next turn. But if our opponent doesn't have a sweeper, we might still have a chance with the Shaman of the Park. We got our Huntmaster a bit too late. So will he have a sweeper? Well, he might have something like an Avacyn here, but there isn't much we can do. And we actually have a Decimator. Okay, let's see. So they will all get... Plus two, plus two. Can we just cast him? We have to merge him. So, ten mana, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, and we can emerge from, let's say, Narham Renegade. All right. Well, nothing much to be said here. Oh, we can emerge from the Druid of the Cow itself. We can pay for it and emerge from him. All right, let's do it. Let's see if he has an Avacyn. Doesn't look this way. And it's going to be a victory. Okay. We don't really have any creatures to crew the Copter. Mm -hmm. This looks a bit better. We can create, we can start off with the Renegade, then create some more Elf Tokens with the Dwinners Elite next turn, then create even more and have a Might of the Masses. Our opponent has an Azor Azorius Colors, white and blue. Okay, so a Copter or a Dwinners Elite, I think... I'm ready to attack and then say it wins a lead. This puts a pretty decent power on the board. For power, blue and white, not exactly the fastest colors. He can cast out something. Question is, what does he have? Alright, so we're going to attack first anyway. There is a chance that he has something like a declaration in stone. So what do we do? We play out the copter. We want to hedge our bets a little bit if he board wipes or has the removal spells. We're still going to be somewhat fine. And if he has counter spells we have quite a lot of creatures that we can cast out. So let's see what it's going to be. Okay. Nothing else. Let's see. We can cast out the Elvish Visionary. And perhaps we're going to get a land that we can cast. Okay, we did get a land. So that's quite nice. Let's go ahead and attack with everything we have. Let's see, no need to use the ability. I think I want to hold on to the Might of the Masses until the next turn, since we can cast out the Renegade, and I don't think he has removal for, for mana. Okay, Scattered to the Winds is completely fine on the Renegade. Our opponent does have a counter spell. He's going to cast a Reflect the Mage. Alright. 
<laughs> I'm not too sure he wanted to do that. Well, we can't cast our next Dwinning's Elite, but I'm just really unsure he wanted to do this. Let's see, we can get a Sylvan Advocate here. We can get in for 5 with this. Yeah, and it looks like this is game. We've got more power than he has life. Let's see to whom. Yep, to the smuggler sculptor. Don't think he has anything for one white. And this is game. Okay. One mana is not enough. Two mana is decent. Let's play the game. Start off with the forest. Hopefully we'll top deck another elf so that we can activate the Dwinian's elite ability. And our opponent plays white and blue. So we have to try and be as aggressive as possible. Hmm. But looks like Dwinian's elite will just have to enter the game as it is right now. For the main reason that these are not very active colors, this might be control. And against control we have to be as aggressive as possible. Okay. Alright. Let's go ahead and attack for two. Question is, do we wait for our Lissalina Huntmaster to enter the battlefield? We run the, a very real risk of getting board wiped. But I think I'm going to have to take it. We need more small creatures in our, in our hand to make it really work. And if he has a board wipe, cannot really apply that much pressure. Our Lissalana Huntmaster must survive. The opponent is going to think what he's going to do. Okay. He ends it. We are getting more and more mana. Let's go ahead and attack for two. Get the Huntmaster out. And just hope that he doesn't have a board wipe. Alright, he has combo. He can gain some life off of this. So we can go for the reclamation stage to create more tokens. This is definitely an Esper control, but we can get rid of Kambal anyway. Since we have the Feral push that he can activate, I doubt that he... Well, he might be on a token deck, but... In any case, I do want to activate the Feral Push on Campbell. He is going to drain us for two. But at least we've got this out of the way. And we do have the Shaman, so the question is, does he have a board wipe? Let's see. Okay. So, a Sylvan Advocate. What this means is that I think we commit. If we get board wiped, then we lose. So, what is it going to be a counter spell? It's going to be an anguished unmaking. Okay. This does mean we're still going to get in for 5 and 3, yep. Still get in for some decent damage. And the only question that is left is, does he have a board wipe? And he needs to board wipe 
with 5 toughness as well, so this has to be a planar outburst if he is to win. Okay, Anguished Unmaking is just going to get him down to 1. Declaration can take out the tokens, but still, this is not going to be enough to save him. So, we're just going to attack and end the game. Okay, let's see. Our opponent is going to play first, but we only have two creatures. That's not really what we want. One creature is not good either. Mm. Alright. This way, at least, if we draw one more mana source, we can get a smuggler sculptor and get a chance to shuffle through our deck. So it's not like this is the worst that can happen. White and green. Okay. Alright, we've only got an Arkham Renegade, but we didn't get our land drop, which is quite regrettable. So I'm not too sure if we will have a chance to win this game, since our opponent is going to be at three lands already. Plays out a Death Cap Cultivator. So now has access to 4 mana, potentially 5, while well, we're still stuck on 1. This is definitely not where you want to be. Since there are many, many threats that our opponent can play, we are not going to be attacking. Alright, Abzan Colors. Alright, as from beyond. So potentially an Aldrazi deck with an Ulamog, some sort of ramp. Alright, let's see, he doesn't really have any mana, so I'm not too sure what he wanted to do. Still, I think we want to defend here. And I think we want to shuffle away the Feral Pushes, since we don't have black mana and we need other sources as soon as possible. So I'm not too sure why he did this. Anyhow, we are on 3 mana. Let's play out an Elvish Visionary. We draw an additional card and crew the Copter. Blossoming Defense is fine. We will attack for 4, and even if he has something like a Reality Smasher, well, this is just something we'll have to do. Now the Feral Push will have to bite the dust, we want to have our mana sources as soon as possible right now. And we've still got a lot of creatures that we need to play out. We've also got the Reclamation Sage for the From Beyond. Stores of Vegetation, okay. This is some sort of ramp deck, so I think that getting rid of it with a Reclamation Sage is going to be really good next turn. Don't think there is much that he can do, although he did. He can't sacrifice the From Beyond. He will get an Ulamog, just like we've suspected. In any case, we will be attacking, and we'll be attacking for 5 this turn. So now it's a race against time. Let's see, how much mana does he have? Cannot really see well here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, something like 8. Do we use the ability or not? Let's use this ability. We've got another Reclamation Sage, but I still think I don't want him. I'd want 4 mana ideally to... to I want to top deck a mana source so that I can go for Druid and then Sylvan Advocate next turn. Hopefully. Our opponent has 7 mana. Let's see if he has more ramp. 
And also we have to hope that he doesn't have a mass removal. But he does have a Kalitas. Okay. He does have lifelink. That's quite a lot of sustain. So we can just go and get in for three. Our opponent didn't top deck any mana sources. So we've got that going for us. I think I can attack with the Narham Renegade as well, since he has Death Touch and trading like this is not a problem. This also plays around a potential Blast Alliance. Yes, please. Now, let's see. Mm. A difficult choice here but let's get rid of the elvish visionary all right we get in for four this is not too bad i just hope that he doesn't have a mass removal because this would completely wreck us but that's just the way it goes okay Alright, he attacks. We can jump with a token here. So he won't be getting any zombies. Has a woodland wanderer. Okay. As long as it's not mass removal, I think we're in a decent position. Has three mana left. All right, here goes. Let's start the calculation. All right, we've got Dwinin. She can buff all the creatures here. So this is going to be, let's say he's going to block the Dwinin's elite. This is going to be two, uh, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, nine. Yep, we should be able to do it. Let's go ahead and crew the copter with her. We can also go for a blossoming defense. Yeah, that does doesn't sound too bad. We can just deal all this damage directly and use the druid of the cowl. to pay for the Blossoming Defense. Yep, and that's victory. Okay, this would have been an ideal hand if we didn't have the situation when we have only one mana. Alright, this looks interesting. We do have a turn to play Druid of the Cowl. Then if we will draw at least one more mana source on turn 3 we can go for Lissalana Huntmaster and start populating the board. Mm -hmm. Our opponent pulls a black mana so there might be sweepers which is definitely bad for us. Alright, play out the druid and we are still looking for more mana. I really hope that we're going to top deck one more mana source. Black and blue. Might have a Tsenza, but we do get the mana, so I think it's worth the risk. Let's go for the Huntmaster. Alright, here it is. So next turn we can generate even more tokens. Let's see what our opponent is going to play. It's going to be a white mana source. Alright, so this might be Esper Control. So we've got five mana sources. I'd say yeah, why not? Let's play out the Lissalana Hunt Master as well. Generate the tokens.
and if our opponent does not have a counter spell, he's going, uh, he does not have a mass removal spell, he is going to be in trouble. If he does, we are in trouble. Alright, he does have a language. So that's a bit problematic for us. But still not the end of the world. We can play out the druid. Then the dwindling is elite. Let's see if he has another language where he needs expertise. Because if he does, then it's more likely than not GG. Okay. Nothing from him yet. Let's go ahead and attack. Let's see. 12, 5 and 3, 8. We can deal 8 damage next turn. We can deal 10 damage next turn if we have the Druid. But we may run into a mass removal spell, so I think I'm not going to cast out anything right now. Use a Stealing Time. This is fine, we still need the black mana for the Shaman. So let's see if he has another mass removal. Shambling Vent for potential lifelink. Okay, he has a Disciple of the Ring, but all of his mana is tapped, so he cannot use it to the maximum potential, and we do have Might of the Masses. This is going to give plus 4, and I think we want to get rid of the Disciple here, since it can tap down our creatures. Okay, he's at 9. If we have one more black, then this is good game. If he has a master removal spell, then this is good game for us, more likely than not. Yep, planner outburst is going to take out the creatures here. Esper control is quite strong against us, especially if he has drawn into all the mass removal spells. Nothing can be done about it. Perhaps I shouldn't have overextended as much as I did. Let's see what we're going to top deck. It's going to be another mana. Let's just say go. Yeah, probably a good game anyway. Okay, let's see. Elvish Visionary into Dwinning's Elite doesn't sound too bad. We are on the play. I think I've just played him, he's playing Esper Control. So that is the worst matchup that we can have. Since he has mass removal spells. So we definitely want something like a Coptum. Okay. Let's go for a Visionary. Let's see what we're going to draw. It's going to be a Shaman, alright. Selling time from the opponent. So we've got three mana, we can attack for one, and now the question is how do we proceed? I think we want to put out as much power as we can. Our opponent is still one turn away from the sweeper, so we might go for a druid into the Shaman. This is going to be 5, minus 5, so we can hit for 10. Okay, let's go ahead and attack. He's going to take the damage. He might have a mass removal spell for everything here next turn, so the question is, do we overextend or not? Let's say yeah, let's still go for it. No guarantee he is going to have a mass removal spell, and he did not use a counter spell here. He does have a telling time for sure. Okay, let's see if he has a mass removal. 
Alright, he has a shambling vent, so we are still going to get some value here at the very least. Alright, let's go ahead and attack. Let's see, if we go for the shaman, we're going to leave him at 5. Our decimator requires 8. So we need a 3-drop, any 3-drop to go into the decimator next turn, but there is a chance we will overextend. In any case, let's just go for the Shaman. Let's see if it will get countered. It will, but there isn't much we can do about it anyway. Let's just say go, see if he has a mass removal spell. He does have Planner Outburst and Languish in his deck. No. What I think I want to do is I want to just attack straight into him. Well, we could just go for a Decimator and it might get countered, or it might not. Let's just go for it. Let's emerge from the Druid. It will get countered. Still, this is going to trigger our creatures. And does he have fatal pushes? Seems not. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next video.